Module 1, Lesson 21 Light and how we perceive it differently than our cameras. The goal of this lesson is to teach you about how our cameras record light and how our eyes perceive light and the differences there. I've touched on this a little bit already in Lesson 19. Our eyes are capable of seeing a broader range of light and tone than any camera currently can. This will change as technology continues to develop, but as of now, you can actually see more than your camera can record in a single image in many circumstances. HDR images are the exception. In this lesson, I want you to be thinking about the limitations your camera has. It's important to understand this so you can set your exposure correctly for your main subject. You may have noticed as you've been doing some of the challenges that sometimes your main subject is under or overexposed, darker or lighter than you know it really is. This often happens when the light is strong and bright and there's a lot of contrast in the scene. It's because the tone range in the scene you are photographing exceeds what your camera is capable of capturing in a single exposure. Let me get a little geeky for a minute. Your camera's exposure meter is calibrated to perceive everything as middle grey. That's halfway between black and white. Camera engineers calculate all of the related controls based on that calibration. But, as you already know, not everything in the world matches a middle grey tone. Being able to make adjustments for this will enable you to make more satisfying exposure settings. So when you photograph a scene with very high contrast, the camera's exposure meter may not read it correctly and the camera's sensor may not record it so well. Likewise, when you photograph a scene that's all white or all black, it may turn out looking grey. You'll need to make a choice about which tones in your composition you want to expose well. This is a major factor in the art of photography and I cover a lot about it during this course. Module 1 Photography Course Challenge number 21 The aim of this challenge is to get you to start thinking about how you see a scene and how your camera might photograph it quite differently. Find a light coloured subject in the sun that's casting a good shadow. So I've got a variety of subjects here, some a bit lighter and some a bit darker, so some contrast. Here they're backlit and then I'm going to turn the table around and photograph them so the sun's coming from the other side as well. Compose a series of photos, some with a lot of sunlit areas and others with less sun and more shadow. Vary your exposure settings and use your exposure compensation, unless you're in manual mode. Look at the highlight areas and the shadows on your camera monitor. Now look at the scene again. Do you see the shadow areas look darker in the photo than they really are to your eye? How about the highlight areas? Can you see more detail than your camera has recorded? Don't forget to be taking notes about the settings as you change them and what you're observing. Checking your camera's monitor will give you some idea as to how much your camera has recorded across the tone range. The image you see on your monitor is only a JPEG and not a RAW file, so the tone range is actually narrower than it will be if you have your camera set to save RAW files. When you view these on your computer, you will see much more of a tone range. Later in lesson number 26, I'll teach you about two other tools that your camera has, the histogram and the blinkies. These will give you more information about how your monitor displays the photos. Key points from this lesson are, our eyes are capable of seeing a broader range of light and tone than any camera currently can. Your camera's exposure meter is calibrated to perceive everything as middle grey. Not everything you photograph is middle grey. 